Herman, obviously NASA is, is in the news for most of us for a number of very exciting and very uh, uh, powerful reasons. Right. But one of the things that uh, a lot of people don't realize is that there's a tremendous amount of public outreach that uh, NASA undertakes, and in the particular with the air show uh, environment and industry. Can you talk a little bit about NASA's outreach to the public via the air show community? Sure. Uh, this year I've been privileged to come to some of the air shows, and we're working in an autograph booth. Um, and talking to the public about what I do. I fly UAVs primarily for NASA at Dryden. So I like telling people that the Predator is not really used at NASA to carry bombs and missiles and all that. We use it for Earth research science missions. We've been flying the fire missions the last couple of years and people really don't know about that mission. So I like detailing it to the public of how the airplane is um, doing missions over their backyards during these crucial uh, fire seasons. Let's talk a little bit about the mission you're undertaking with that particular aircraft. You mentioned the fact that you're doing some fire work and environmental work and so forth. Originally, we, you know, people think predators, they're thinking of them circling someplace in Afghanistan looking for Osama bin Laden. But this is a far better platform above and beyond the combat obligations for a number of observable missions. Yes, and some of the other missions we've done this year, we've done some acoustics research with the aircraft. We put a four-blade propeller on the airplane. Uh, we did some fiber optic work. Uh, we put some sensors on the wings and went out and characterized the movement of the wing in flight. So there's a, a lot of things you're doing with the aircraft. That's pretty, uh, pretty interesting stuff. What is the significance of the name Ikana? It's Choctaw. We went to uh, their nation and got permission to use it. Um, so it's uh, awareness, conscious awareness is what it means. How often is the aircraft flown or deployed at this point? We try to fly it uh, every 45 days. Uh, if we don't have a mission, we take it up for uh, proficiency flying. We have two pilots right now that are landing takeoff qualified, and we have one cruise pilot. So we do big missions a couple times during the year. In regards to uh, missions in which you're dealing with inclement weather and IFR environments and so forth, what kind of limitations do you have for that? We try to keep the plane out of visible moisture. We uh, fly in IFR flight plans when we're out there in the NAS. Um, but it's, uh, it's a fair weather flyer. Most of our missions, we fly with consideration with the weather. We try to pick good days to fly. We don't want to fly when it's really stormy and really icy out there. And we've got crosswind limitations we abide by. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great airplane. Herman, thank you so much. Thank you, John. Aero TV is brought to you by the beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology.